Welcome back to another episode on B Hall Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at storytelling experts in the world of gaming, Remedy Entertainment, taking on their first game in the first person shooter domain with Crossfire X. Originally announced as a two developer team where Smilegate Entertainment will be in control with a free to play multiplayer online version of the game. Remedy will take part in a two episode campaign version of the game called Operation Catalyst and Operation Spectre. Having two different separate developers that in the end led to two different games and two different fields of the game, there were mostly negative reviews that were from the free to play version of the game. Remedy had also decided to use a different engine and in the end gave the game a smoother feel and control. Very excited to hear Remedy as a developer as I have loved their games that they have made in the past from Max Payne 1 and 2, Alan Quake, Quantum Break, and recently Control, each with their unique style of presentation where I found that the storytelling and action always came first and was the best part of the games that they made. Very hopeful to see if they could pull this off with their expertise from a third person point of view to a competent, story driven first person shooter. Crossfire X Operation Catalyst was developed by Remedy Entertainment and released by Smilegate Entertainment in 2022 for the Xbox One and the Xbox Series X and S. The game begins similarly to other first person shooters games where they discuss a highly secretive mission that is at hand. The mission becomes a double cross as the team looks to have been sold out and now they need to escape and survive. The story here is straightforward and very easy to see through. I pretty much knew what would happen next besides for the next main storyline plot, which I still think is a bit of a stretch for any gamer. Other than that, one plot line, pretty much a game just like any other Call of Duty reimagining. Should have been an easy mission. I had no idea what I was walking into. Okay! 30 seconds and go! Randall! Careful. We're gonna be exposed out in the open. Lagless knew we were coming. Wait, you think we were set up? You got another explanation? No, but come on. We need to get to the safe house. Rob, wait. Inspired by Metal Gear Solid and Resident Evil, the team has very high hopes to create characters that are larger than life. Unfortunately, the characters here are lackluster as the game doesn't give enough backstory here to any of them. I enjoyed Randall the most as he was the only one that seemed to want to actually help the team escape. Of course, with the length of a standard DLC, it is very hard to attract players to their characters in a storyline that is completed in a mere three hours. Hold on! You're in no shape to be in charge. You wanna fight me on this, Morales? Hey, come on, bro. What would you have us do if it were you? Just walk away? So, the mines. As for his gameplay, I actually do not have anything to say here. I played the game in 30 frames per second quality mode first just to see how the ray tracing and 4K visuals of the game will look. Taking some notes from the basic environments like Control, this first person shooter doesn't give the same vibe as Control, but had the game run smoothly without any hitches at all. The 60 frames per second performance mode feels more responsive, but takes a hit with ray tracing and lower resolution, but honestly, very hard to notice in a fast responsive action shooters like this one here. He'd have a big part to play in how Operation First Frost would turn out in the end. What the hell? Oh, Randall. Is that you? Morales, got a complication. <laughs> yeah, you think? Comstar came down on top of Hall. Shit, man. As 
as time passes on more and more unless in an RPG or a slower game with their slower mechanics I have chosen the performance 60 mode when given a chance as it is really hard to tell the difference in a fast action game the response of this is as advertised and a must in a first person shooter the gameplay like any other first person shooter clone with a button that slows down the action like a bullet time effect from other past games. I found that when you shoot, the game speeds up and harder to control. Once you get used to it, it really comes in handy when defending against multiple enemies that can also cause the game to be a little bit easier. Although the first first person shooter for Remedy, this becomes an average game that I hope for, much more due to who is behind the game. With last gen visuals and an average story with no character development, it is hard for me to at least play the second campaign, Operation Spectre. A nice first attempt, but it definitely needs more to grab my attention where I can just stick to the usual, well more developed and insanely bigger yet entertaining set pieces like in any Call of Duty of your pick. Crossfire X Operation Catalyst gets a 6.0 out of 10 for its ho-hum short adventure into Remedy's first foray into the first person shooters. As a huge Remedy fan, please stick to the combat and story first, then we can play a game that is worth the name on the box, Remedy. That's it for this look into Crossfire X. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload. Just want you back. I'm at the top, locating the comms. Just gotta make that call. Motherfucker! Damn.